Yeah, Bennett Joseph um, says, Gil, thanks for all the work you do educating us. So how do you go about determining the starting dose for test SIP or enantate? And is body weight a major factor in determining starting dose? Yes, so he happens to be a physician and he knows as well as anyone that body weight is certainly a you know, important factor when you determine medication for, for almost anything. I mean, very, very few medications out there are not gonna take into account the weight. This is why in, uh, in pediatrics, we always go by milligrams per kilogram uh, per day per child because it, it's very, very important to understand. 120 pound individual does not absorb, metabolize and excrete uh, things the same way that a 400 pound individual does. Uh, there's many factors, many variables. Um, weight is one, age is another. As we know, when, when, when people age, the efficacy of their cardiovascular uh, system to distribute, their liver to metabolize and their kidneys to excrete uh, loses efficiency. And therefore you have to be careful with people's ability to excrete medication. One, you don't want to overload the kidneys and two, less so with testosterone, but in general with all meds, um, the risk of uh, toxicity becomes a factor, uh, both in children and in, in, in elderly uh, patients. So uh, age and weight and comorbidities and diet and lifestyle are all factors. And this is why when someone says, what's a good starting dose? And I'm not trying to be an ass, but when I say this is a 45 minute assessment, there is so much subjective data and objective data that we collect and assess before we prescribe anything to anyone in terms of frequency, dose, reasoning behind it, ancillary products, et cetera. This is when I say cookie cutter, I'm not just referring to everyone gets the same dose and, and, and frequency, that's a very evident cookie cutter. I'm saying if everyone is just looked at for five minutes and determined on the spot, that's a cookie cutter too. You've got to look at an individual as an individual, but then it's the first patient you've ever treated and the last patient you'll ever treat. You're literally doing your entire life's work around this particular case today. And if you approach it that way, you're going to build a plan from the ground all the way up. And you're not going to say, here's another one next. OK, it is an assessment that is important because these are people who are suffering. Nobody wakes up and says, I think I'll try TRT tomorrow. Presumably, when people get to the point of starting, they've probably gone five or 10 years, either symptomatic or feeling things that they didn't know why. And they may have actually started in another spot that was done incorrectly. And they may have come back with a bias or a negative attitude towards treatment in, in the first place as a result of previous experience. So it's your obligation to get it right the first time and dedicate the time required to do it correctly. You don't have the luxury of playing guinea pig with an individual. So we're very, very meticulous about who we treat, how, and why, and not just say, well, yeah, he looks like a 120 milligram type of guy. That's, yeah. you know, we have a plan according to the desired outcome. That desired outcome is established first with the help of the patient. And then we work backwards. Well, if I know my destination, now I can route back to see how to get there. 